Hi everyone, welcome back to Coffee Books and Rain, where we bring our cup of coffee and hopefully whatever book that you've just finished, and we talk about the coffee, or no, we talk about the book, and then we sip our coffee. And this is how we enjoy our afternoon. But we do book reviews, book critiques, and all those sorts of fun things here. Anything literary related, bring it on in. Leave something down below and let me know what we should talk about in the future. Doesn't have to be much. You, do you like poetry? Yes or no? Do you want to hear more about memoirs? What do you want to hear about? Put something in the comments down below and let me know and we'll dive right in. But today's book is Icon and Inferno by Marie Lu. And I am so very excited to talk about this book because this is the second book in the Star and Stars and Smoke series, so book number two, coming out very soon and it's coming out June 11th. So hopefully I'm gonna drop this just maybe like a day or two before. But I want you guys to go and find Books or Magical Podcast on whatever podcasting platform because I will be doing an interview with Marie Lu herself talking about this fantastic book. I had so much fun with it. I really cannot tell you guys how, I mean, how easy of a read, how fun of a read, whimsical of a read. Engaging. Uh, engaging may be a really good word to use for it, but Stars and Smoke, introduces us to Sydney and Winter Young. Sydney, Sydney is not married to Winter, so um, Sydney is a spy. She is kind of our, I guess, professional spy. She's been in the game for a minute. Winter is a professional pop star. He has never been in the game. He has just been on stage singing his heart out, trying to get the attention of his mom, who is still mourning the loss of Winter's brother, Artie. Winter is not Artie. His mom knows that and kind of treats Winter as though he is almost not there. It's really sad. Now we walk ourselves over into Icons and Inferno. It is book number two, like I said, and let's talk about it. Let's do our book review and see what we think because Again, I had a good time with it. I think I read it in about two sittings. And we get to visit Sydney and Winter again. I'm wondering if we're gonna get more from this series. I don't know if it's a duology because there is a little tiny part at the very end that sets it up like potential, but not a ton of potential. Like it's maybe, but I don't wanna, I don't, I don't know. You have to read it. You have to read it in like like go back there and get to that point and see what you think. I think it's up to Miss Marie Lou if she decides she wants to, if there's potential for a good story to be coming from it. But let's dive into the summary just for a minute and see what we think. A year has passed since Superstar Winter and Secret Aidney, Agent Sydney went undercover on a dangerous mission to bring down the baddest man in London. Winter hasn't stopped thinking about Sydney since, and she's been trying not to think about him. Yeah, so he's thinking about her almost daily. She is trying desperately not to think about him. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's cute. It's so cute. Family secrets and nasty newspapers has Winter desperate to re-enter the secret world, and it's not long before he gets his chance. Sydney is back, and this time the mission goes right to the heart of the United States of America. A rescue gone wrong, an assassination attempt, and the return of an old flame. Plus, winter right back into, oh, puts, <laughs> puts winter right back into the action and into a country on the brink of chaos. So, what do we think so far? I was intrigued. I did not... When my co-hosts on the Books for Magical podcast told me that we had the opportunity to interview Marie Lu, I jumped at the chance because I had just finished Stars and Smoke and knew this one had just come across our net galley. And I was like, yes, please, thank you. Because not only do I really enjoy this series, like I said, middle grade Y, no, not really so much middle grade, but YA, definitely, um, kind of thriller spy novel, 
I also liked her um, Legend Prodigy Champion series, which was really a great series as well. So go check that out too. I love spy books. I, I like when they kind of have that daring do and trying to figure out who's the mole, who's the, who's the kind of the rogue secret agent or the one that's like giving away all the details that we're supposed to be keeping secret. And there are lots of secrets involved in this one because not only has someone in like Winter's realm uh, written a tell-all book about him, but... Sydney is about to kind of, I don't want to say lose, but kind of lose the man that she calls father or dad, uh, Neil. He is about to retire from the secret aging, agenting world, agenting, something like that, uh, world where he is going to return, hopefully, to the world of normalcy where she won't be able to contact him ever again because in that particular realm of returning to daylight, he will have never been a spy. He will never have been part of Panacea. He will pretend that Sydney never existed. And he'll go back to the daughter that he actually has if she'll take him back. Because he's not been able to be part of her life. And Sydney's a little jealous. Like, she understands it, but she also feels the loss again of another parental figure because she sat by her mom's bedside and we see it in flashbacks of the first book as her mom passed away and now she's kind of sitting sitting watching Neil uh, wrap up this final mission so he's able to retire from the secret agent game and take a step away. So it's a little tough for Sydney to be able to deal with. She's feeling that loss, and there is a vulnerability that comes with that for her. Winter, on the other hand, also feels very vulnerable because he doesn't know who wrote this tell-all book. Now, he hasn't read it yet, but he is aware that it's supposed to be coming. He was kind of told at an interview that um about it and he was very thrown off no one had mentioned this to him until this interview occurred and he pretty much just gets up from the interview and leaves because the interviewer more or less blindsided him with question with this question one of winter's exes come back in no it's not sydney it, she's not really an ex but you kind of keep wanting something to happen there and if you're looking for a slow burn with that, you're definitely going to get it. It's a smoldering thing just there. And that's probably one of the things that kind of frustrated me a little bit because no one, like, no one wants to just, like, admit their feelings. Everybody's just, like, so, quote unquote, married to the game, married to being a spy, married to their job. And I I think I kind of hate that a little bit. Uh, I don't think any job is really worth my happiness. I don't know. That's just my personal preference. Is if my job causes me more stress and heartache and prevents me from having the like the happiness that I think I could have over here then I may have to rethink my thoughts on the job. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I love a good work-life balance. And if I can't balance life with work, then I don't think it's a good work. Uh, I, don't, I don't live to work. I work so I can live. And um, I definitely leave my day job, my office job, at the office whenever possible. Sure, my boss sometimes lets me work from home a little bit, which is super great. Love him for that. He is a brilliant, brilliant man. Um, however, I definitely have, lit, have done jobs that didn't let me work from home, but I still really loved the people I worked with, the team I was with. There were so many benefits, and I never felt like I was sacrificing my home life. Um, I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't have stayed with the company that I'm with for 15 years if I weren't able to find that level of balance. Now, I know that's a privilege that not everyone is able to find, 
but I think it's hopefully a goal you can look for if like if you have that opportunity um, definitely do it in the smart ways I don't suggest any sort of MLMs pyramid schemes network marketing master resell none of that none of that that is not what I'm talking about hope there are hopefully other jobs and avenues you can take that are much better and stable without having to rope other people into it if that makes sense and without having to actually I didn't have to pay any money to go to my job I've never had to pay money to go to my job other than I think I've had to move myself once for a job I took and that that's on me anyway back to the book back to the book <laughs> we are talking about Icon and Inferno and again super fun it's an absolute like it's an absolute fun read is it perfect no I, I don't know where the big deal is with regards to some people's thoughts on this book I I'm looking at Goodreads right now and I, I like I said if you've ever like listened to me at all on this channel I make my own opinions first make up my mind about what I'm gonna say and then only then do I actually look at Goodreads now one it helps me to get the summary for you all based on what kind of the publisher has put out there it helps me get the release date for you all to make sure I'm giving you the right date and about the pro approximate page length but it lets me also kind of argue with some of the um, some of the things that I see on here and what I'm seeing is people don't seem to really like it well okay I take that back it's not that they don't like it I don't think it's what they were expecting and I don't know what they were expecting if they weren't expecting this because I was I had a good time and there's one particular person that again I'm not here to argue with them I'm just here to say I don't know what book they're reading because I think this one was great um, was it quite similar to the first one no not really um, I definitely think we had a different premise with a different story different motivations for the main characters that's a good thing that is not a bad thing um, was there a little bit of back and forth with relationship issues yeah a little bit um, could I have done with a little bit less of that probably but overall I I mean it's a fun read I think I ultimately gave it I wanted to give it four and a half stars uh, that is my like actual star rating but because I'm the type of person who doesn't rank down when I'm ranking I went ahead and gave it five because I prefer that if I'm already at four and a half and they don't let me do half stars then I'm just gonna go ahead and give you the five is it perfect no uh, will I continue to read Marie Lu yes absolutely would I read another stars and smoke book yes absolutely um, do I want to see what happens with winter in Sydney 100% yes I do think we could stop dancing around each other so much and I think at this like age of 20 that they're at they're still kind of young and the ending was a little a little bit cliffhanger ish for their age those are my critiques whether they you consider those critiques or not totally up to you but I do see that at least 78% of people gave this four and a half four to five stars and I say good job to them because this book deserves it I truly think it deserves it but anyway those are my two cents those are my reviews um, let me know what you think do you like kind of YA spy theme do you like any spy theme say yes or no down below <laughs> um, please like and subscribe help me grow my channel a little bit and you know what I think if we reach hmm, if we reach a hundred subscribers I may do a give giveaway of one of the books that I have received as an advanced reader copy I've got a few hmm, about six so far physical copies of books that I've received as advanced reader copies and you know what if I reach a hundred I will go through my subscribers and I will 
put them all in a little hat or one of those randomized generator things, find somebody, and we'll see what happens. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next page. Have a great one.